Hey everybody, it's me, Ian. I'm back with another edition of Featured Extras, where we take a look at some of the special features on a brand new home video release. In this case, we're, we're getting ready for spooky season a little bit early this year with a look at Poltergeist, which recently came out on uh, 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray, courtesy of Warner Brothers. We've got the, uh, the fancy slipcase edition right here. Now, I don't believe I've ever actually owned Poltergeist on Blu-ray or DVD or maybe even VHS. I mean, maybe my dad had it back in the day. I don't remember. But uh, the point is this uh, version, the 4K Ultra HD, is the first time I'm, uh, I've actually owned Poltergeist, so I can pull it down from my shelf. And that's great for me. However, if you've bought this uh, edition or one of the previous versions of it on home video, you may be a little bit disappointed because the three extra features uh, included on here, if you don't count the trailer, uh, are, you know, in, uh, leftovers uh, from the previous editions. There's no new content on here. So really the the selling point is the, uh, you know, increased uh, sound and, and <laughs> why am I leading with sound? Uh, video and uh, audio quality. Well, I guess, you know, I could lead with sound if, if you're an audiophile and, and you're really buying this for the, the upgraded sound quality. But uh, for most people, I would assume we're going to be buying this 4K Ultra HD. They're going for the, the picture and the sound. So uh, where does that leave us? That leaves us with me going through the special features as uh, minimal as they are and kind of talking about what I found. Now, I concentrated on a two part documentary, which is called uh, They Are Here, The Real World of Poltergeists. Uh, and it's split into two 15-minute segments. The first is called The Science of the Spirits, and the second is Communing with the Dead. Now, documentary is a very interesting term. Uh, I don't know exactly when these were uh, filmed, but uh, they do make reference to the year 2005, and uh, it kind of shows because, I mean, in one, one of the, uh, the talking heads in this so-called documentary is wearing one of those button-down jeans shirts, so uh, you can tell it's not exactly a, a modern uh, piece of filmmaking. I thought it was entertaining, both parts, but I was very puzzled and very intrigued by the fact that I was watching, in a lot of ways, uh, propaganda. Uh, this two-part um, documentary, I, I hate using that word because it's not a documentary uh, in the sense that we might be familiar with, um, in that it presents uh, a subject and tackles it from uh, more of a scientific and multi-angled point of view. Uh, this is purely for the converted, purely for people who uh, believe in ghosts and psychic phenomena and all of that, and don't need to be convinced uh, otherwise. Um, I, full disclaimer, uh, I've heard this full disclosure, I guess. Um, I believe that there is something out there beyond the, the realm that is uh, known and, and able to be touched and sensed by regular people. I do believe there are people who can tap into that energy source and see things that are beyond or, or whatever. I just don't happen to believe that they necessarily show up on television or in these kind of, I'll just call it a faux documentary. The reason I call this uh, propaganda is because it is not uh, presented in the form of a straight documentary. Uh, there's a lot of tricks that uh, are meant to, I guess, get people on board with the notion that these talking heads are putting forth. Uh, the idea that you can see ghosts, talk to ghosts, that uh, ghosts, as in the movie Poltergeist, can uh, you know, move things around and, and, and disturb people. And now that they're malevolent spirits necessarily, they do uh, kind of hold true to the message of at least the first film, which is that these are just troubled spirits and not necessarily malevolent. But watching these uh, segments, if you have a keen eye, you'll notice that there's a lot of manipulation uh, in the presentation. For example, a lot of the uh, the talking heads, the experts that they have on to talk about these uh, phenomena, they're against black, they're wearing dark clothing, there's candles lit behind them to give this kind of sinister, uh, otherworldly air to them, uh, some gravitas. Uh, they, they look very much like early to, <laughs> early 2000s goth, uh, aside from the, uh, the jeans shirt wearing guy. Um, they have a lot of recreations. They inter intercut a lot of scenes from the movie when people are talking about, uh, you know, stuff flying across the room or, or unexplained phenomena. They'll they'll either show creepy hands pressing against glass, or they'll have uh, some of the more, I guess, traumatic uh, images from Toby Hooper's film 
uh, again, spliced in. The effect is subtle. Uh, if you're just watching it as a piece of entertainment, um, yeah, I mean, it's effective because uh, Poltergeist, at, you know, for the time, I mean, it was only five when it came out, uh, but I grew up with that movie. My parents loved it and I watched it probably way more than I, I should have at way too young an age, but it did have uh, an impact on me and the way I think about uh, ghosts and, and the spiritual and stuff. And uh, Frank Marshall, the uh, producer of the film, who is interviewed in one of these two documentaries, uh, said that they wanted to base the movie on facts rather than uh, things that were made up. Now, the issue here is that given what the actual people say uh, across both 15-minute uh, segments, it's unclear what those facts are. There are a lot of people who claim to be psychic, who claim to be able to speak with the dead, who claim to be experts in, you know, chasing ghosts and differentiating between, you know, uh, psychics versus mediums versus ghost hunters and versus ghost chasers or whatever. But there are, A, no bits of evidence uh, offered. We do get, uh, I guess, I'll call it home video footage uh, of some of these talking heads um, going into spooky looking places and, and holding the, the parallel divining rods or whatever they are and, and walking slowly through a room and, and, you know, calling out to spirits and things like that. Uh, we do get a lot of the, the set dressing of stuff you might see in a, a ghost hunters TV show where uh, half the convincing is done by the atmosphere of just going into a rickety old house uh, with, you know, night vision goggles on and, and everything is, you know, very, very creepy. And it helps to add to the, I want to believe atmosphere of what's being presented but there are no um and i guess maybe this would would defeat the purpose of having such a documentary on a fictitious film but there's there's no counterbalance there's no one saying yeah i mean it's cute and everything but we've never really proved any of this what you do get is some of these uh, so-called experts proclaiming that uh, you know the study of ghostly and otherworldly phenomenon is a new science and uh, one of the people saying that um, unlike traditional science, uh, paranormal activity is not something that can be repeated on command, which is very convenient when you want to uh, sell a product that you ultimately cannot prove exists. Now, I know I'm probably going to be I'm probably being a downer here for a lot of you who are like, come on, it's it's a it's a two part documentary on Poltergeist. What do you want? I guess what I do want is something with a bit more balance. It would have been nice if Warner Brothers had invested in and I understand there's a cost to everything with not necessarily uh, a guaranteed return, but wouldn't have been cool to see a modern day uh, two-part documentary, even a one-part documentary, uh, to present an update on uh, both of these subjects, on the science of poltergeists and the idea of communicating with the dead, um, offer some balance, have uh, people come in and say, hey, in the last, you know, 18 years, whatever, since we produced this, uh, these, this original piece of content, here's what we've learned. Here's some, some hard data to back up some of the claims that were made beforehand. Uh, here's some hard data to refute a lot of the claims that were made beforehand. I mean, we're in the era of, you know, fake news and, and can you believe anything that you see on TV or in the movies or even on the news? Um, so presenting this uh, on a brand new home video release, it's strictly a nostalgia piece. Uh, anybody going to look for it, look to it for information, you know, in my opinion, is going to be sorely disappointed um, if for no other reason than the fashions. Wow. Anyway, that's just my take on it. I do highly recommend watching Poltergeist, even buying Poltergeist on the uh, the 4K Ultra HD, uh, the special features notwithstanding. Now, you know, this is the first time I think I've done a uh, featured extras where I have actually not recommended the release based on the special features, because as I uh, mentioned, they are leftovers and they are kind of unimpressive leftovers at that. They could they could use a little bit of updating. But, uh, you know, if you've never owned Poltergeist, this will make a handsome addition to your shelf. Now, you might have noticed this is not a Poltergeist movie review that will be coming up in October because we are in full on preparation for October's scary season. And that means we're bringing back Scarathon, the Friday night live streams and uh, Poltergeist from 1982. Yes, it's 40 years young this year, if you can believe it, uh, is going to be one of the films that we discuss. So we're going to be doing that live with a, uh, a host of special guests and um, yeah, and you uh, writing with your comments and, and questions and all of that good stuff. So we're going to celebrate this uh, wonderful uh, movie from Toby Hooper, not Steven Spielberg. Uh, and um, 
yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. To join in on that fun, make sure that you are subscribed to Kicking the Seat. If you like this video, please click the uh, thumbs up and feel free to share it. So yes, until next time, whenever that is, whatever that is, thanks very much for watching Kicking the Seat and take care.